was really kind of wild. You know, it wasn't safe for the children. Everywhere you go, there's like men gang members. Uh, a very dangerous gang member. Some states have even successfully prosecuted mothers for child abuse for using drugs while pregnant. A woman has the right to do what she wants to her body. She needs help, not punishment. What do you think? What do you think? Look, there's seatbelt laws to protect children. Maybe there should be laws about parents smoking in the home or car. What, what do, do you, you think? think? large window panes from the Trade Center in the lobby uh, appeared as if somebody took a bucket and just splashed the blood. They were up on the other floors above me and there's just no way they ever got out. So th those screams were tough. The sensations around me were unbelievable. The radio was crackling with officers yelling for help, for assistance. Uh, I watched people looking for their children that were in the daycare and my first thought was like, oh my God, just, oh my God. Terrorist acts result in more than physical damage. Psychological effects on victims, responders, and the community can be significant. It took a, a long period of time for me to come out of the, the clouds, so to speak, uh, from af after the Oklahoma City bombing, simply because it was a terrorist attack. The purpose of terrorism is to terrorize. It really is psychological warfare. It's less important the number of casualties killed than it is the effects. Acute stress disorder is basically a, a range of reactions that includes, um, uh, in a sense, reliving the event too strongly. You want to reach out for help, but you want to have a connection to people that kind of went through the same thing that you did. And when I did that, things started getting better. The psychological effects of terrorism are profound. It is important to understand that many reactions, although intense, are considered common and natural. It is equally important to understand that there are techniques and resources available to help those who are overwhelmed. And my question is, how do you approach community and school leaders that refuse to admit that there's a drug and alcohol problem in their areas? In a number of communities, the data is there, the compelling stories are there. What it takes is leadership. 